Guys, 700 subs, you're amazing. Thank you so much. In return, I want to give something to you. So here comes the grand studio tour of how I use my home as a studio. I will show you how I work and what I work with and show you guys how you can use your home as a studio if you're just a tiny bit organized. We'll start with where the magic happens. Over here in the corner, we have my desk. This is where I do most of my sketching and where I prepare all my ideas for YouTube. The funny thing about this desk is that I found it on the street left with a sign that said free on it and um, I took it right away and it's a really good table. It's amazing what people throw out. Look here, you can even angle or tilt the table like this. Perfect for drawing actually. Here we have a little lamp that I use for drawing. I changed the light bulb on this one um, so that I made it 5000 Kelvin, which is the perfect temperature because it mimes daylight. and Daylight is the best light to draw in, especially when you're working with colors. On the wall, just above the table, we have a drawing that I made when I was a kid. And this is the first observational drawing I did, because it's called Tetris. And I really like this work, and it reminds me about why I started drawing, because I've always been drawing. Procrastination Monkey. Up here on the shelf, we have uh, most of my drawing materials. So we have all my pencils, and I like to keep both new pencils as well as old pencils because I just like this ana analog feel here. Of these pencils, I think that my favorite brands are probably uh, Stadler and then this is from Peroki 12B. I really like to draw with these um, soft pencils and then I also really enjoy to draw with these oil pencils here. Up here, we also have some of my much cherished color pencils which I use when doing color sketches and finding out which colors to use. Here I would like to highlight Faber-Castell which is really a good brand and also um, these ones from the brand of Kandash. It's really quality and I love to draw with these. Up here we have a small cute unit here which I actually use it quite seldomly, but for instance, we have things such as um, for doing print work here, down here. Some storage for pencils. And this is a small brush that I can use on the table here. Correction paint. I don't believe that many artists use this, but I'm a big fan of it. And it's also just very nostalgic for me as I used this in my childhood. We have some markers down here as well. But the thing I really love about this unit is to open and close the drawers over and over again. In this ones we have um, bills, uh, checks, all that kind of boring stuff. And up here we have uh, a style sheet that I use once in a while to look at and go through these sketches here, these are all drawings that I really like um, and I use these as a reference to keep in touch with what style I want to achieve. Over here in the corner we have my mood board. It's uh, essential for my work and essential for any artist I think. It shows me some of the projects that I'm working on and it helps me keep track of my process. And um, I think that you should. a good idea is always to surround yourself with your friends uh, in terms of these sketches. Also because it's a good reminder of um, seeing these things as a process, as a journey, rather than um, thinking about the destination, because the destination is boring. The journey and the process is, that's where the fun is, uh, is happening. Pheasant feather. In the opposite corner here, we have my relief printing machine. And this is the one I use for doing my printing work, of course. Um, and I just love working with this machine. I rarely use it, but when I use it, I always enjoy working with this feel and I just love machines where you can see the actual mechanics, mechanics, how they work. And running this wheel is just magical every time. Let's go to the drawers department. In this drawer here, I keep some of my um, gear for creating YouTube videos. I have some more art materials, some pastels. And in these boxes here, I keep all my sketches and ideas that I'm working on for future projects. So these are all sketches that I really cherish and these are a little treasures to me. 
projects um, that I might never going to finish, but I just keep them because it's too difficult for me to, to throw them out. And you never know when you're going to use the sketches. It's, it's like an archive. In the next drawer, we have a whole stock of sketchbooks. And here we have the two sketchbooks that I'm currently working on. We have my materials down here for printing work. And then we have some paper that I can really recommend for sketching on. This paper right here is fantastic. This is Manifold. And this is some cheap paper I bought in a roll. And the great thing about this is that it helps cure potential art block because this is really cheap paper and you just I think it kind of frees your uh, way of drawing. So this is something I really use a lot to sketch on. Try it out. Over Instagram, I have a web shop where I sell some stuff. Um, to show you what I'm selling, let's just go to the bedroom because this is where I store all my stuff. So here we have some passepartout cardboard that I use sometimes when I frame. We have some leftovers for some leno cutting, leno cutting mat, a cutting mat, always nice and handy when you need to cut with a hobby knife. And then down here, we have something special. Here we have some carton, colorful carton here. And then let's just see. I also have a stocking here of some paper that I use for, for doing graphical work. So this beautiful paper here is from Let's see what this is from. Yeah, it's a beautiful handcrafted paper here from Hanemühle. And we also have some here from Fabriano. And having this paper here and working with paper when doing graphical work just makes me happy. Because this is also a, a craft in itself to create paper. Down here we have the Holy Grail. Because this is where I keep my largest work here we have a piece called Wales in Greenland, and this is a printed work. Let me just show you the, the original. Here we have one of the originals. And as you can tell here by the paper look, it's really just, it's something else when it's this kind of paper. And as you can see, this is an edition of 30 original works in all. And the name for this technique is um, Collagraphy. Here are some other works that I'm also selling, some originals. This is a series I did to, to honor uh, the craft of natural wine. These are all made using the technique dry point, where you kind of scrape in, um, into a metal plate and then you use ink to... Um, the ink goes into the lines where you've scraped the metal and afterwards you print it using a printing machine. So we're uh, into the living room now, and I just want to show you a couple of books that I also use once in a while. So this book here is called Complete Guide to Life Drawing by Gottfried Bames, and this is the one I bought when I was on drawing school. And it's just an invaluable book to have as an artist in terms of anatomy and in terms of learning how to draw really. If you really want to dive into drawing, then uh, I can recommend this. And today this is still my Bible, which I take out and look in once in a while. Betty Edwards, To Draw is to See, also a very inspiring book on drawing. And not least in terms of how, um, how we start to draw and how we draw when we are kids. And then how we start to draw when we are adults and how you can kind of work around drawing and keeping Mm. Keeping in touch with how to draw what you see. Great book. This one is mainly about anatomy by Bern Hogarth. And I mostly keep this book because I really like the pastel drawings in it. Yeah, some beautiful pastel drawings. There are some things you can use in this book in terms of proportions. But mainly I keep it because of the art. This book here is a book that collects the three or four generations of the Wyatt family. And um, 
I take this out once in a while also to study and to look in how classical illustration was. This is N.C. Wyeth, amazing work here. This book here is about composition. Actually, it's mostly written for photographers, but I use some of these um, design principles that the book explains. I use these in drawing. So this is why I have this book. There's one more place in the living room where you can stock some things, and this is beneath the couch. So down in this drawer here, I have mostly sketches from previous uh, projects that I've worked on. And then I also have some frames. And then I have some more works here, actually, some printed works. Here I have plenty of different sketches, things that I've worked on and am working on at the moment. Just a huge mix of drawings. And one day I should probably get these organized better, but you know how it is. This is for a children's book that never quite happened, but I keep them anyways because as I, as I mentioned before, the process is always interesting and I never know when I can use these um, sketches again in some other way. In the last drawer here, I have most of the stuff that I also bring at uh, design fairs. So here we have the print you saw before of the whales. We have this in postcard format. We have some other postcards that I've done. This is actually a print of a uh, calligraphy also. Santa Claus doing a yoga pose. And also in this drawer, I have all of my sketches from drawing school. Yeah, one day I'm gonna present you a video of all the drawings that I did at the drawing school. Thanks for watching and thank you everyone who's been supporting this channel by subscribing and commenting on my channel. Feel free to pass on the channel to other interested in drawing and as always, have fun drawing.